soon to a theater near you. Alrighty. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie trailer cliches. It was his idea. For this list, we're taking a look at the most common tropes that keep popping up in advertisements for feature films. Basically, we're talking things that are overused in movie trailers in an effort to get us to watch the flicks. Ah, on a feeling. Number 10. The Opening Aerial Skyline Shot Who am I? You sure you want to know? Tell us if any of these clips look familiar. The aerial skyline shot is an overused yet always effective method of engaging the audience in a movie setting. In most cases, the setting will be a city that'll play a key role in the narrative. Sometimes the city will need saving from a lone hero, as in Spider-Man. Or maybe the city will connect a series of diverse characters, like in Crash. It's the sense of touch. Any real city, you walk, you know? Either way, the trailer establishes the location as a commanding presence that makes us all feel puny and tries to set the scale. I've been alone for a long time. Not because I want to be, but because until I solve this problem, I have to be. Number nine, where'd the happy music go? Nobody wants to see a movie with no conflict. So whenever a trailer opens with happy music and joyful people living perfect lives, expect all hell to break loose within seconds. The trailer's soothing sentiment is abruptly substituted by intense music as the characters attempt to survive zombie apocalypses, ship sinking, and even the end of the world. Even if we can see the extreme change of pace coming, this cliché still creates a genuine sense of panic that captures the movie at its most exciting. Where is she? She's not good enough for you! Swim fan. Number 8. The Record Scratch The world must turn to two living legends. Like our last entry, this cliché sets us up for one thing, then delivers the complete opposite. Primarily used to advertise comedies, the trailer presents itself as really badass or mystical. There's a new player in town. A rapper. Say what? A plain white rapper. Then in a fake out, the music comes to a screeching halt and our unexpected protagonist emerges. Will be left in the hands of one man. Ah! <laughs> Oh, yes, I give it a cheese stuff. Nice, you like? This also applies to trailers that start off with a character going through a typical day, then undergoes a random twist, such as Rob Schneider becoming a carrot. Only problem is, he's about to become a carrot. I'm a carrot. It's like a setup to a joke, although we can usually predict the punchline. Now I can teach you to become a master of disguise. Really? I'm going to be a master of disguise. I'm going to be a master of disguise. I'm going to yeah. be a This summer. Number seven, flickering. Jonesy. Yeah, B. You be careful. Be careful of what? A good trailer shows the audience just enough to get us into the theater, while also being restrained so as not to give the best parts away. Horror trailers typically find just the right balance, unveiling the buildup, but cutting away before revealing the payoff. Who is that? Who's in there? It's as if the film is so frightening that the trailer felt the necessity to cover our eyes for us. Oh, oh my God! Oh, oh. I don't want to see this, Jonesy. If we want to see the monster that everybody's screaming about, we'll have to go and see the whole movie. With that, we're officially sold. Number 6. The Jump Scare Jump scares and flickering go hand in hand. Habitually, trailers reserve their greatest jump scare until the very end. The music goes silent, with a character all alone in the dark. 
or are they? Tension builds as they turn on a flashlight, look under a bed, or walk down a menacing hallway. No matter what, there's always someone or something waiting to leap out. Even if we know the scare is just around the corner, we can't help but jump out of our seats, guaranteeing horror junkies will buy a ticket. Number five, the fade to black. I'm gonna show you something beautiful. If you want your trailer to seem as dramatic as possible, make sure virtually every transition fades to black. I have it. In the vein of many other cliches on this list, the fade to black is another method of continually raising the stakes. With each blink, the trailer becomes more epic and thrilling. Chris? Then, just when it looks like the trailer can't possibly top itself, fade to the trump card, be it Ultron or Han and Chewie. Chewie, we're home. Finish matters off by transitioning to the release date, and we'll eagerly mark our calendars. Number four, critics and accolades. Come on, let's go in. I want to see what's on the other side. Some movies will find an audience no matter how low their Rotten Tomatoes rating is. Smaller movies, though, require strong critical reception to get the word out. Now let's go back! You shouldn't be here. Get out of here now! If a picture achieves accolades from Sundance, Cannes, or other prestigious film festivals, the trailer will be sure to make note of its early buzz. If such a claim carries on throughout award season, the TV ads will highlight any Golden Globe and Oscar nominations too. Winner of the American Film Institute Award for Movie of the Year. Of course, some flip this cliche upside down, such as the humorous trailer for Jackass Number Two. A sad commentary on our degenerating culture. A disgusting, repulsive, grotesque spectacle. Number three. Inception horns. It's difficult to pinpoint exactly where most of these trailer cliches originated, except for this one. While intense music is common in summer movie trailers, Inception took its score to another level of awesomeness with booming horns that totally blew us away. Every time you hear that sound, it feels like the earth's shaking. Now almost all action movie trailers recycle the Inception horns. It's as if they're trying to implant an idea in our heads that the film being advertised is going to be the next Inception. Number two, from the people who brought you. Beyond the sea, somewhere Where anticipated sequels and adaptations have built in audiences, the trailers for completely original movies need to find a new selling point. This is where the talent behind the scenes comes in. If people know that Christopher Nolan, James Cameron, or the geniuses at Pixar are involved, we'll check out the flick on name recognition alone. Of course, this doesn't always work to a film's advantage. The director of Scary Movie. Did anybody honestly want to see Little Man after learning it was from the guys who brought us white chicks? We didn't think so. And the guys who brought you white chicks. I know just what to fix you for you to have a good night's sleep. Mmm, oh, oh, oh. creamy. You're drinking breast milk. Before we preview our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Do I get to say thank you this time? My girl in a bikini. <laughs> that does absolutely nothing for me. Oh, hey, look, it's the ice! Why is it so big? So it doesn't melt. It's actually really interesting how they do it. It's this one company out in Boston that... <laughs> oh, oh, that went south so fast! Oh, this is some classy... <laughs> Jeez, Megan.
I'm sorry, I want to apologize. I'm not even confident of which end that came out of. Number one, the deep voice narrator. Somewhere in the Far East, a deadly crime ring is about to trigger an international crisis. While some trailers speak for themselves with their mind-blowing imagery, others require an outside voice to make things sound even more explosive. From the sewers of Gotham, a new villain emerges. Not just any actor can do voiceovers for movie trailers, however. They require a thunderous throat to sell lines like, In a world where laughter was king. For years, the go-to man for trailer narration was the late Don LaFontaine. In a land of timeless beauty, William Wallace was a man of peace. Recorded in over 5,000 trailers, LaFontaine's godlike voice eventually became a pop culture icon destined for parody. New York cop John McLean has come to see his wife. I missed you. Instead, he's going to have to save her. Whether it's LaFontaine's all-encompassing voice or another narrator's, this cliché never gets old. What do you mean, no, in a world? It's not that kind of movie. Oh? Okay. In a land that... No in a land either. In a time... No, I don't think so. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite movie trailer cliché? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. A girl. No. Two girls. No. Now, no. more than ever. Stop it. A renegade cop. Uh, I hate you. A robot renegade cop.